Hi there, it's me, your humble, friendly neighborhood stroke assaulter, a bit scruffy. That'll change in a, about an hour. I'm going to shower and shave. I think I'm going to go for the John McLeese look. Nice little mutton chops and a kind of big mustachey thing. For those of you who don't know who John McLeese was, Google him. Serious, original, OG badass. Um, anyways, we're going to continue on with the letter of the day. Um... That being P for Plateau. Yep, that is right, P for Plateau. Eventually we would get to P for Plateau. I was trying to avoid it because right now I'm kind of there. Um, and again, for those of you with communication difficulties or aphasia, I'm not doing the alphabet out of order. It's just sort of as things come to me, right? I haven't made a video in a while because we've kind of got a bit going on. So what has happened? Um, my counseling ended, not by choice, but due to funding. Um, my physiotherapy ended due to needs assessment, I scored higher than they needed to. I haven't needed occupational therapy or speech pathology in a while, um, mainly because I score higher than their tests. Now I'm at a plateau. Um, I've arranged for um, physiotherapy through my group benefits insurance through work, so I'm gonna start that next week because there's still some goals I wanna work on and I want supervision with it. Um, I've got everything set up at the Y, I just need to start attending, yeah, I know lazy um and right now i'm in a bit of a enforced plateau because the insurance company i have at work can't seem to understand the fact that i had a stroke and they need to shit or get off the pot and approve me for funding so i can carry on with the things that i need to do to get me back to work I'm gonna say this not that bright not that useful um in fact they're making it almost adversarial so i'm a bit of an, an enforced plateau so I've done a bit of research because I try to do for some of these research um, to back up, you know, it's just not me pontificating, stepping onto a soapbox, as you were. So a plateau can happen at any point during the recovery, right? So, and I'm going to do a video about the difference between recovery, rehabilitation, and reintegration. So the recovery, you do that in the hospital um, and at home. That's like the first three to seven days after your stroke, the not dying piece, that's your recovery, right? Um, then you begin the rehabilitation when you're able to, um, that'll either be in the hospital itself, um, that'll be in a dedicated rehab and, and, and rehabilit like a rehabilitation and recovery facility, uh, that could be in a nursing home, that could be at home, that could be at home and going to a, an outpatient kind of clinic type deal, right? And then you have the reintegration. Once all of those functions are beginning to tail off, you are going to go back to the life that you used to have, or close to, hopefully, um, such as go back to work, get back into the community, all that funness. So, approximately 400 persons per 100,000 of people over 45 years have a first stroke in the United States Europe and Australia. I'm going to assume that includes Canada, right? Um, stroke is the most frequent cause of adult onset disability in the United States, right? Um, and in the U.S., it is the largest growing expense for Medicare. What exactly that means, I don't know, because you have Medicare, Medicaid, Obamacare, whatever, right? So patients who survive a stroke always have less physical disability by the end of the first three months, right? So you have your stroke, the first three months are the most acute, you have your greatest physical limitations in that period of time, and that's where you make, you know, um, a large gain, right, in the first three months. And depending on the scale they use to measure your functional ability, right, um, how how much of a self-assistance individual can you be, such as uh, toileting, dressing, bathing, eating, mobility, being ambulatory, um, doing things such as, um, you know, grocery shopping, like your basic day-in, day-out self-care type things, right? So you're going to plateau someplace between month three and month four because you've organically made the largest change you're going to do and it's just the body and the brain doing what they need to do <clears throat> initially to get better 
After that, the work begins. That's where you've got the six weeks, six months, and a year. <clears throat> right. So at that point, because you're immediately acutely post-stroke, there's going to be a small gaggle of uh, professionals around you, be it occupational therapists, be it speech and language, be it uh, um, physiotherapists, right? And they're going to be there to assist you make those gains. <clears throat> But in order, at least in Ontario, and I'm going to assume the same would be in the States for Medicare or Medicaid, um, or if this is being handled through an insurance type event, they do what's called a needs for service assessment, right? Um, and they're going to keep doing these at intervals, 30 days, 45 days, whatever. Um, and they're scored. And depending on the score that is the maximum allowable, to maintain service, if you score inside that range, right, they can justify to whoever holds the financial purse strings, yes, that individual still needs help, right? Um, however, once you score above that threshold, you're going to be limited to the remaining number of appointments that you'll be allowed, if you'll be allowed remaining appointments. So. The last time I saw the wonderful lady, Nancy, who's an amazing individual and a brilliant physiotherapist, we did the tests. I scored higher than the needs assessment. It's like, we're done. I'm like, okay, no cake. Should have had cake. Streamers, hats, you know. So the problem is now, um, only about 25% of the patients will return to the level of everyday participation and physical functioning um, of persons who've not had a stroke. Well, luckily, I intend to be in that 25%. So, consider that. Only 25% of patients that have stroke will return to a level of everyday participation and physical functioning. So, I'm one in four. And I intend to be that one in four. I'm going to have some limitations post-stroke, I know that, but I'm, I'm not ready to accept what that'll be just yet because I'm not at a year, right? So we need to talk on June 21st of 2019, and I'll let you know where I'm at. Um, so the first six weeks of recovery <clears throat> is parts of the brain that are not damaged or impacted, right? Um, recovering on their own, right? Parts of the brain that were spared damage that are both near and far um, so that's near and far right from where the actual infarct or hemorrhage was right your actual stroke event right and <clears throat> your brain is learning to rewire itself and replay itself and and, 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 and and reproduce the results it needs to reproduce like it did pre-stroke right um, however at any point after your stroke you may have Cognitive, meaning thinking, language, meaning speech, and motor skills, meaning, you know, being able to pick stuff up, move around the room, right? Um, they may they may improve um, through just ordinary day in, day out. They may improve through repetitive exercises. Uh, they may improve through physiotherapy. And, you know, there's, and as you engage yourself in doing things, um, you're going to let the brain learn how to do things again. And you're going to suck at things initially. So immediately post-stroke when I got home, um, I didn't think cutting food was a smart choice. So I ate things that didn't require a lot of cutting. Um, and I ate, I ate out a few times because I wanted a hot meal and I was not prepared to cook. I just, However, when I realized that one of the best choices for me is I'm right hand dominant, I had a left brain stroke, which means my right hand's impacted. <laughs> I need to do things to get myself where I need to be. <clears throat> and I knew it was going to be three to four weeks before I saw an occupational ther therapist and a physiotherapist. I was engaging, doing simple things like get a cucumber and try to repetitively cut slices that are two and a half to three millimeters thick. If you make a mistake, you're going to eat it anyways. But the great thing is once you've sliced a cucumber uh, and, then a, and then a carrot, and then celery to repetitively equal thick slices, guess what? You got the better part of a salad. Right? You got to eat, right? Um, now, you're going to have periods 
where you just kind of bottom out, <clears throat> right? That you don't feel and you don't observe any actual gains. That's plateauing. Now, some of that could be you've reached the zenith, right, of what's going to be. And I'm going to be honest with that. You are eventually going to hit a wall that cannot be overcome. And that will be the ultimate plateau. That is where your recovery ends. However, that's not to say you cannot make demonstrative gains two years after your stroke, three years after your stroke, four years after your stroke. There are many, many, many examples that are backed up by medical evidence. And this isn't me just, you know, talking on my ass. There are many examples of people being told you will never walk around the block again, right? And sure, that may be true for the first 12 months, but if you have the ability to do it in a supervised fashion with the right level of support, right? There is a great possibility that, you know, you may be able to walk around the block again, but it's going to take work. And that work could be a plateau of two to three years until you get the skills, the ability, get the brain to want to cooperate, get your body to want to cooperate, work up the physical endurance and do it, right? So I'm not going to say that every single wall that you can't immediately come over is a plateau, but there is that ultimate plateau where bang, you've stopped. And that's where that's going to end. Some of the plateau um, is, and I'm going to be honest, it's you're going to hit a period where you're going to need to do more work, right? Where you're going to have to just suck it up and deal, right? Like me, one of my plateaus is push-ups. I can maybe do seven to 10. And, and it's the body just doesn't like the up and down of attempting to do a push-up. It just doesn't do it. So I've hit a plateau, and that's why I've engaged a physiotherapist to um, assist me and try to overcome that plateau. And then I'm going to work through some of those exercises at the Y on my own accord to try and, and speed that up. Other plateaus you're going to get, you may experience times where you have taken two steps forward, and it appears that you've now taken a step to a step and a half back, right? As the brain develops what they call neuroplasticity, there are times where the brain is basically going to kick you back a notch. Um, and why that is, even the experts don't know sometimes, but that may be a possibility where you start to make gains, right? And as you're making the gains, all of a sudden you get pushed back a notch to a notch and a half, right? Doesn't mean the world is going to end. It just means your brain's not quite ready to get there yet. If you've been there once, you will get there again. It just might take time, right? Now, there is no hard and fast rule about your recovery moving into your rehabilitation, right? Every stroke is unique, just like every individual is unique. So one of the reasons why you may start to plateau is depression, right? Consider that at least 25% um, to 60% of people that have had stroke, right, will have depression related to their stroke within the first year of their stroke. <clears throat> and that all depends on the study you read. Some will say 25 to 40%, some will say 25 to 60%, it, it, you know, some will say 25 to 35%, right? So there's at least a one in three chance, right? At least one in three that you will have some kind of stroke related depression within the first 12 months of your stroke. And that, that could be a great cause for um, uh, plateauing because all of a sudden you're kicking yourself in your ass in your head, suffering from a case of the why me's, the woe me's, and um, you know, that's going to eliminate the potential for you wanting to get active and do things that you might need to do to facilitate your recovery. Um, if you happen to be in that situation, you, you need to seek help, right? Now, In some cases, you may find your formal therapies may be withdrawn or ended if you haven't shown positive gains and outcomes in a couple of sessions or a couple of weeks or a month or so, right? Because they feel there's no qualitative gain, right? There's, there's no reason to continue this because you're not moving forward. However, 
a plateau during your recovery does not necessarily mean you've hit that wall that you cannot get over. That simply means you've gotten to a place where you need more time, right? You've gotten to a place where you need to work out how to be able to do the thing, right? And it's a case of explain, demonstrate, imitate, practice, master. They're going to explain it. They're going to imitate it. They're going to demonstrate it. You're going to practice it. You're going to master it. Is that going to take two weeks, three weeks, two months, whatever? There's, there's no hard and fast rule how long that's going to take. I've, I've been working on push-ups for a month and a half. I still can't do more than, I think the most I've ever done is 15. And then I was just physically spent because my brain just did not like the up and down. Right? Um, now, the, the greatest thing you're going to have with plateauing is going to be the physical piece, right? Be that um, any activity throughout your physical therapy rehab portion. You may need, you may have some plateauing with the speech and language, right? You may have periods of time where, especially for those that are learning to talk again, um, learning to read and write again, um, there may be periods of time where you kind of plateau um, and then you get over the hurdle, right? Um, I can't give you any advice on that because that was not my dilemma. Um, I had word selection and word finding issues um, and aphasia. I still suffer from or suffer through word finding, word selection issues at times. I do still have aphasia at times. That might go away. It might not. But then again, that could be my plateau with it where it's now situational and it might take another six months to finally dissipate or lessen, right? <clears throat> that could be another plateau I'm working on. Or it could be the wall. I don't know. But ultimately, there's no need to get discouraged due to hitting a plateau, right? Um, a plateau is just part of the journey, right? Part of your post-stroke world, uh, your new normal, right? When you're going from recovery to rehabilitation to reintegration, because you're right now in that rehab stage, right? There are going to be many things that plateau out. Um, some of it could just be fatigue from doing the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. Like something so simple, like learning to cut your food, right? Um, it could be the exercise has become boring because you're starting to master the exercise and you don't really feel the need to continue practicing it. Although you haven't completely finished mastery, but you're starting to master it, right? Because you've done enough practice and repetition and practice and repetition that you know how to do the exercise, but you're not actually, you're not really committed to make that last step into mastery, right? Or the exercise has gotten too simple and you're afraid to ask for a new one, right? That could be a thing. So, with plateaus, right, there's many reasons why you're going to hit a plateau, and there's no real reason to be scared about hitting the plateau. Um, you're just going to hit one, right? Um, when will those plateaus come up? I'll be honest, I can't tell you, right? Some of those plateaus won't be of any doing of your own. They'll be because you're waiting for someone to fill out a form. Um, you're trying to figure out who do I see for whatever. Um, you're trying to figure out who pays for what. You're trying to figure out whose responsibility is what. So you're kind of stuck in some sort of administrative limbo, kind of like I am right now. Um, I would still be in counseling if it was not for the insurance company. Um, I'm trying to arrange for an occupational therapist. Again, insurance company. Um, I'm waiting to get back to the physiotherapist. I've already arranged that, did that yesterday. As soon as I've seen the physiotherapist, then I'm going to start going to the Y because I don't want to do any damage. And I'm, you know, I need to... Um, and they also link down with the Y as well in order to how much it's going to cost. But that being said, I'm trying to be as proactive as I can to avoid significant plateauing. And then part of the plateauing is going to be because, like I said before, you finally hit that wall. But that, that being said, you're not going to know you've actually hit that wall until you've tried again and again and again and again and again. And after literally months, it's not getting any better. You can assume that's your plateau and that's where that's going to end. However, if you find yourself reaching to a point and taking sort of a half step or step back, don't worry about it. If you've already, if you've already gotten there once, you'll get there again. It's just the brain wasn't ready yet, right? You push yourself a little bit too hard. It happens. 
been there, done that. So on that note, if you happen to have been enjoying what you've been watching over the last uh, four months, it's been four months, two days ago, right, that I had my stroke. Um, and if you happen to have been enjoying what you've been watching for the past four months, please like, share, subscribe, share with friends. If you happen to know someone that's going through their own post-stroke recovery journey, please let them know about the channel. They may get something out about it. If there's something you want to see me cover, you can email me at strokeassaulter at gmail.com. I say, I say again, strokeassaulter at gmail.com, or you can leave a comment down below, and I'll definitely get back to you as fast as I can. And for those of you that happen to notice either in yourself or someone around you, the signs or symptoms of a stroke, uh, that being facial droop, uh, the inability to raise both arms equally effectively or at all, the inability to smile equally effectively or at all, uh, slurred, stuttering speech, inappropriate word usage for situation or context, inability to stand unaided, general body weakness or weakness on one side, please immediately place that person in a position of comfort and dial 911. Something so simple can save a life.